Okay. All right, top five running backs of the Kirk Ferentz era. We start with Sean Green, Doak Walker Award winner. Nobody's going to debate that. I think Liddell Betts deserves to be there as well, given the rare NFL success of Iowa running backs. He was, of course, at the very beginning of the Kirk Ferentz era. Albert Young, the numbers speak for themselves with Albert Young. Marcus Coker might be a little bit more controversial, given mm-hmm. the fact that he dealt with injuries after a huge, was it 2011? And then I'd say Fred Russell, number five. He's a legacy guy. Um, in fact, his nephew is uh, an incoming DB for Iowa this year, who people are really excited about. So those are my top five. I could the, the list as far as honorable mention could be quite large. Um, I, I think some people would say I have a bias against Akram Wadley. I wasn't trying to be biased toward Akram mm-hmm. Wadley, even though his legacy has forever been tarnished by some of the things that happened off the field. And of course his choice, I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but his choice to go after Iowa and Kirk Ferentz and the staff legally um, following the 2020 scandal, but he would definitely deserve to be in consideration. Mark Weissman, you mentioned him last week, Um, you know, very one dimensional back. Okay. (laughs) We know that very one dimensional, but man, what a story coming from being a, a fullback at Air Force. Um, and then Tyler Goodson. To me, those are your three big honorable mentions given Tyler Goodson's production. But he struggled to run between the tackles. Makai Sargent, Jordan Kanziri would maybe be next on that list. Uh, and then I think it's far too hard to to uh, project. But that that would or, or comment on that would be uh, those would be my top five. So if you just threw me that question, and I did no research, Akram Wadley would be in my top five. I have pulled up the numbers of Marcus Coker, who I remember well, but yeah, it's it's one decent season, then it's followed by a really strong season, of course, with 15 touchdowns in 2011. And remind me, how good was 2011? That was a seven and five okay. season. Who they, they play in the They game? ended up, they, well... They was that lost uh, Boston College. No, that that no. Eleven was Oklahoma. They oh. lost to Oklahoma in the inside oh. bowl. That was a good game. 27-24. Yeah. Well, seven and six is not a good record, though. Yeah. That, that seven, was a that was a okay. poor year coming off a 2010 season that had a lot of hype going in, but they lost a lot after 2010. Uh, and Marcus Coker was really really good. Uh, I don't think you can ignore that 2011 campaign. So we have Coker with one 1,000 season. And we've got uh, Akron Wadley with two 1,000-yard seasons. So there's Wadley in, of course, uh, more recent times. S- pretty similar teams. Of course, the 15 team that he contributed to was outstanding. A top 5 to 10 team in the country that almost uh, played in the playoff. Uh, and then, of course, the Had two... more help. Had more help. Gotcha. I mean, like, he was he was running with... Fre- I'm not take, trying to take anything away from him, but... He was running with fresh legs a lot more than Marcus Coker ever was. I mean, that was that was a those that 15 room was, um, I believe, Derek Mitchell Jr., Jordan Kanziri, Akram Wadley, and I might be missing one guy in there. And I, I don't remember who was backing up Marcus Coker in 11. It might have been Joel Hampton who got hurt. Um, yeah, I mean, just different, totally again, totally different styles between Coker and, and Wadley. And I can't put, I mean, frankly, I know this sounds bad, but I, I can't put Akram Wadley with some of the stuff he's been accused of. And, and he's accused Iowa of some things, but some of the stuff he's accused of as it relates to how he handled fans and merchandise after his departure from Iowa. I have a hard time viewing him as an endearing uh, figure. In Iowa athletics, regardless so in, of numbers, you're including that in I, your. I, I think, I, yeah, for me, from my perspective, I kind of have to. Sure. I just think it's hard not. I think it's hard to ignore that. Uh, I don't. Well, you're separate from. Uh, yeah, you're separated from the scandalous yeah. stuff. And I and I try to separate myself, but again, I will argue there that you can't be unbiased. It's going to affect some people are are cold to the heart where <laughs> it doesn't really impact them, others to varying degrees. So I'm not saying that uh, it doesn't influence me, but uh, I, th- I think I could justly, for example, rank OJ Simpson 
as an all-time great running back. And he seems to be just completely dismissed. <laughs> People don't want to deal with him. They don't want to. And I'm like, I see these running back risks, lists of all-time greats in the NFL. And I'm like, where's OJ Simpson? What? We're, we're talking about football here. Yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to justify the man's well, actions. Akram Wadley. I would be the last person to do that. But Akram Wadley, when you talk about Mark Weissman being one-dimensional, Akram Wadley was extremely one-dimensional. He could not run between the tackles. Could not get his weight up. Um, you know, had a had a great spin move, but at times was careless with the ball. Um, was turnover prone at times in in twenty what fourteen. So I mean, I can give you reasons why I think he misses out on the top five, other than just what he did after football. He also and had he, no NFL. He also had no NFL success. And he, he didn't even sniff the league. A zero factor in the passing game. <laughs> Uh, one pass, two seasons in a row. Who, who are we talking about now? Oh, I'm sorry. I pulled up Fred Russell's stats. My bad. Yeah, don't, right. don't be dissing Russell. on Fred Russell now. <laughs> don't, be, don't be dissing on Fred Russell. Uh, what he did in, in, well, both those years, but especially 2002, I mean, he was he was instrumental in an all-time season. Now, uh, who's the one guy we missed? Uh, Albert Young. Did you look at his numbers? No. His numbers might surprise non-Iowa fans more than anyone's. And he's a guy who I thought had a chance at playing in the league. And I, you know, I was pretty young at that time, but he was one of the first guys I remember watching and being like, wow, this, this guy's a dude. So he had one big, big season as a sophomore. Yeah, but look at the over three years. I mean, 3,100 yards over the course of his career uh, on the ground alone. I mean, close to 4,000 total offensive yards. That's that's pretty insane for an Iowa back. Insane? 4,000 <laughs> 4, total yards for an Iowa back? He averaged 4.8 yards per carry, and in college, that's not I'm not, that I'm not talking about his per, per carry numbers. Well, Those were not very – well, six and seven were horrid offenses, but – but I'm talking about just like longevity and, you know, I think that doesn't that tell, would you rather a guy who's putting together consistent, you know, eight to 1200 yard seasons or one guy who puts up one big season and then it's hurt the rest. I mean, that was kind of Marcus Coker. I hear you. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. From the Hawkeye of the Storm is the place to be. You guys all know that on a regular basis for Iowa football coverage. Anything in particular to highlight this week? Yeah, not not any. Not, ew, let me get this out. Nothing in particular other than um, we'll be publishing a couple more recruiting videos that I did not get published last week. And then, like I say, uh, interview with an Iowa women's basketball athlete here coming up on Friday. So, uh and then I guess we got to start talking about, I got to start thinking about my position previews, my schedule preview, um, all that stuff. You, you know, you always think back in February, Mark, I got all off season. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, wait, it's July. Yeah. So multiply that about 50 times. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm thinking about all sorts of uh, content that should be out there. Well, at least you have a full team that can take care of that stuff. 